the conversation uh, this morning, we have uh, joining us uh, Dr. Nwachuku Anakwenze, all the way from California in the United States of America. This has been a part of the countdown to the May 29, talking about one year of this present administration in office. And we have Dr. Anakwenze joining us to be part of the conversations at this particular point in time. Dr. Anakwenze, how is California, United States this morning? Well, America is good. California is good. Great. You were here with us uh, about a few months ago, and we're trying to make assessment of the present administration, as well as giving suggestions on uh, the way to go. Being a businessman in diaspora, who has also a chain of businesses in Nigeria, from when we had that conversation, uh, looking back from the beginning of this administration, talking about May 29, 2023, till now about a year how would you assess the progress made so far in terms of creating an enabling business environment for businesses to grow from the the the, the, the nano businesses to the big businesses expanding and before i get into that i will make i would like to make some general statements okay is it okay go um, ahead doctor okay i'm dr wachukwana quinze i'm a trained medical doctor, a doctor of medicine, I have ma master's in business administration and master's in public health. So I'm trained to run any kind of business in the world, but I specialize in healthcare. I'm also into agribusiness in Nigeria. That's hey, my Anakwenze. point. Okay, Dr. Anakwenze, this present administration came to office uh, May 29, 2023 to meet uh, a myriad of challenges on ground and a lot of promises for inclusiveness as well as economic prosperity were promised. From the feel as you get in home, from home here in America, and you, like you said uh, the time before now, that usually come around and you also get to superintend over your businesses in Nigeria. How would you assess the progress we have made so far? And from whatever percentage you've given us, what can we do to improve on it? Um, this is what I hear, that people tell me when I come in Abuja, that the cost of their going to petrol cost, going to work is more than their salary. People tell me everything they got in. They, they talk about penta, rice, this. They give me details. Everything has gone up like, like almost 50%. That's what they're telling me. People have problems transporting themselves from town to town. A lot of people don't travel anymore. A lot of people are riding bicycles. The cost of petrol has gone up in a country with petrol. They might be trying, but it's not visible. Maybe they need more time. But Nigeria is supposed to be a great power. We're supposed to be doing well because God gave us everything. God gave us oil, gas, gold, diamond, bauxite. We're blessed with everything. We, we, we are blessed with food, rice, beans, pepper, onions, tomato, fish, nama, chicken. God gave you everything. God removed. You don't have earthquake like you have in America. You don't have tornado. You don't have hurricane. You don't have fire. All the disasters that hit all over the world, don't. it's not happening to you. God blessed you. The only thing you don't have is good leaders. The leadership is what has failed Nigeria. Our people are very intelligent. Nigerian youths are great. When they come to America, the Nigerian people take the first 5% position. When they come from Nigeria to America, they go all the way to the top. And they know the average Nigerian here have a master's degree. And when they go to other countries, it's our own country. The way we are led is the problem we have. That's what I'm interested in changing. I'm, I'm not interested in dethroning anybody. I'm not trying to sack anybody. I'm not trying to do coup. I'm not trying to divide the country. We can do better. That's what I'm saying. God wants us to be a world power. Dr. Anakwenze, uh, looking at the economies of the world globally, you like to say the global economy in a larger perspective, America is the only country that has grown back to pre-pandemic after uh, the, the, the financial crisis as well as the COVID-19 crisis, which brought the global economy to its knees. For Nigeria, Nigeria is not immune from these challenges that we've seen. But yes, according to you, there is a slow pace in growth. For energy, 
Nigeria has taken a bold step to ensure that subsidies no longer be paid on energy, talking about the petroleum resources, but to get to refine in country. The Portaco refinery is about coming up in, in a few weeks. We have Dangote already dishing out uh, the AGO, talking about the diesel. And very soon in this month of May, we're also expecting petroleum products. When all of that is done, how do you see Nigeria in a few months down the air? Um, that, that will definitely help. But generally speaking, the private sector needs to be the focus. Anything run by government fails. In America, government don't hardly own anything. They create an enabling environment for businesses to take off and start. You will see the Dangote one will be more successful than Potaco Refinery. Because anytime you have government on this, it's just chop, chop. You chop, I chop, chop, chop. If you have a businessman run something, they will work 24 hours a day. You will see, it will be a clear contrast. When Dan Gote refinery come, you will see how well it will work. You see Innocent Motors, you see he's making all kinds of vehicles and doing very well. You see a piece airline, they are doing very well. If the government own airline, it will fail. If the government own refinery, it will fail. If the government own iron and steel, it will fail. Didn't you have iron and steel for thousands of years? It's failed. The refinery failed. Just depending on government is not the solution. You, the government needs to make it possible for private companies to run it. The government collect taxes. That's what American do government does. The only thing American government owns is post office and army. That's it. Everything is private. The Am Nigerian government should focus on collect good taxes from companies. Make it easy for them. Give them light, water, road, electricity. Then, then relax and start chopping, collecting money. Royalties okay, you, and you taxes. talked about money, royalty, and taxes has been collected by government. The Nigerian system is a little bit behind. I I don't have the license to lecture you on that. You know what the challenges are. One of the key challenges I want us to bring to the table at this moment is access uh, to cheaper credit. Talking about cheaper credit is for businesses uh, to have credit as single digit interest rate to allow them not just to grow but to expand to create much more employment as well as creating much more wealth what is the american model that is working for america that nigeria at this point needs to key into and how can that be achieved the interest rate here is a little bit high but not we are used to three percent you know or in interest rate now it's seven percent so for americans it's high we want it, we're waiting for it to go back to 3%. The government has a role to play. The American government have what they call small business, um, they give small business loans. So they will check you out, you present your things, and they will see you know how to make this, you know how to make battery. You've trained, you've gone to school, you know how to make it. They will come and inspect. The, uh, the government will give you loan. My company started with American government giving business loan. The, through banks, they guarantee the bank, and they they will give us loan. They monitor us every month. They monitor every month. They see how we're doing. They want to see how many people we're employing. Are we creating job? Are we making things better? Are we creating product? That's how American government works. And they they give you interest rate very low, like three percent. That's how I started my company. The Nigerian government can do the same. You can train Nigerian people. One thing is not just loan. You have to train the youth. The, our Nigerian youth are very intelligent. They are very smart. They just they need to be trained and encouraged. And government should give them loan to start business, not give somebody loan who doesn't know anything. And then they do chop chop money. You can't do that. You have to collect the money. When you give the loan, you have to make sure you collect the money. You have to know sure the person knows this stuff. They check Doctor, me out totally. They know that I. Doctor yeah. Nakwenze, can, can we look at investment in healthcare sector? That is your area of a specialty and it is believed that a healthy workforce is a prosperous workforce. How can Nigeria key into global resources to grow, to, to, to provide basic health care for Nigerians at this time? Um, I will speak about my company. My company is Global Care Medical Group, IPA. You can look on Google, you will see us. We, we're very strong. We employ 5,000 doctors. 4,000 specialists, five, um, five, we have 500 primary care sites that I managed. 
We have 20 hospitals. I've been doing this since I was 39 years old, 1993. So we take care of millions of patients. We, we have like HMO. I don't know. I think you have HMO in Nigeria. That's what I specialize in. I'm the expert in HMO, prepaid health care, focus on maintenance of good health. It's based on trying to keep you from being sick, not waiting until you're sick. We spend a lot of money trying to educate you, make you exercise, make you eat vegetables, make you eat onions, okra, and cut down starch and cut down red meat. We encourage you to eat white meat like chicken and fish. So we, we, our HMO is to prevent you from being sick. And then we put a lot of money into it, train you, make you exercise, make you check up, make you check up. So because when you get sick, we lose money. So it's better for us to make sure you don't get sick. And we put a lot of money and make you test, make you do this, make you exercise. Exercise is medicine. Eating good food is medicine. That's what, but also my company can do everything. We can do heart surgery, heart transplant, brain surgery, kidney. We can change all your bone. We have eye specialists. We have everything. So I, I, are you saying for the Nigerian solution, going private all the way is the way to go? And if that is the yes. case, going private in Nigeria is expensive. That can be managed and be successful in the American system because it is a structured system that has been tested over years and it is working. That's why your company is able to succeed that way. If we're going completely private in Nigeria, how, would, how affordable will healthcare be for the common man? The, for the healthcare, it needs to be a blend of private and government, but led by private sector. It's called um, pri private. Okay, Dr. Anakwinze, it seems we're, we're having a little bit of a hitch at this point, but we look forward to you reconnecting for us to complete this conversation as it is at this particular point in time. Well, we've been talking with uh, Dr. Uh, Wachuku Anakwenze. He is a specialist. He is an entrepreneur in the healthcare systems. He is also a producer, manufacturer of consumables, both in Nigeria and the United States of America, giving us insight on how to grow small businesses in Nigeria as well as expanding the big businesses. This is a prelude to expectations of Nigerians around the world as to the one year anniversary of the present administration that is talking about the uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu led administration, which in a few days is going to be one year in office. Dr. Anakwenze, I understand you have joined us back at this point. Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Dr. Anakwenze, your concluding thoughts. What do we need to do? To grow Nigeria from this level in terms of investment in healthcare, in education, in technology, and youth empowerment? Um, you need a combination of the private sector and then the government partnership. The, the government more in the area of the universities, like University, UNTH, or UNIBADAN, that's the, the level of the government participation. But private sector driven, that will be the major part of the healthcare. And you have the institutions there already. They just need to be helped, financed. You know, the HMO that I do, the government pay, we get paid by insurance company and com big companies. We get paid in advance. That's why it works. We, we get before April start, we already received the money to pay all the doctors and all the doctors are waiting to take care of patients. And we do a lot of things to keep you from being sick. But you cannot work on the basis of you you don't pay the doctors, you don't pay them, and you think they will do the work. It wouldn't work. That's a Nigerian situation. That's what we have. It's a lot of corruption in Nigerian system. The American system works. If we work in Nigeria, you need the right people to make it work. There's nothing wrong with Nigerian people, young youth. There's nothing wrong with them. It's the leadership that's the problem. Thank you very much, Dr. Uwachuku Anakwenze, for your thoughts at this time. Like you said, the way forward is for all of us to be responsive in governance, uh, shun corruption, and be much more productive. We look forward to learning from the American model to get to grow Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was Dr. 
Wachuku Anakwenze from the United States of America. Business Express continues after this break. <laughs>